Welcome back. Well, Dr. Samuel Ayewole joins us this morning. He is a lecturer at the Department of Political Science, Federal University Oyekiti, Nigeria. He is also a research fellow at the African Center for the Study of the United States, University of Petora, South Africa. Hello, Dr. Ayewole. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Okay. So let's talk about the, your initial reaction when you heard about the assassination attempt on uh, Donald Trump. What was it like for you when you heard of that scenario? Uh, I was a bit surprised when I saw the news because um, although the tension behind this, uh, or since the, uh, around this election, this uh, 2024 election in the US uh, has been relatively high, However, it is unexpected that um, we have anything of such magnitude, like a uh, high-profile violent cases or attack or assassination, assassination attempt against a high-profile target like uh, a presidential candidate and former uh, president of the United States. And that's why it's a bit, uh, the news is quite shocking and um, a bit um, uh, traumatic for many uh, witness and those of us that we watch the news uh, uh, across the world. It's quite surprising and shocking for many of us to see that kind of news coming from the United States. Okay, so in light of these recent events, how is gun control being perceived by the public and how is it influencing this campaign? I understand a couple of years ago and months ago as well, there were concerns and conversations about gun control in some states. How is this going to re affect this particular issue moving forward? Okay, I think the issue of gun control in the U.S. is highly debatable issue. It's an issue that has generated uh, tense debates between supporters of gun control and those that are against it that consider gun as uh, owning, possessing a gun as a fundamental human right, uh, which is necessary for them to protect uh, their, their, their fundamental human rights. Uh, and um, although this particular event is expected to affect the campaign and affect uh, public opinion about gun control, well, I'm not too sure. I doubt it if uh, it will change anything in time of um, the general body politics in time of gun control. There are so many issues that uh, issue at play here. There's issue of um, societal perception of uh, an acceptance in the case of um, the perpetrator. Uh, as we, the few details that is now currently available on the perpetrator shows that, and especially from the interview and details that we can uh, extract from um, some few people, friends, uh, neighbors that are close to him, shows how disconnected he, he, he was uh, in, in the neighborhood and in the society. So it is a matter of acceptability uh, for, for the fellow and then psychological disconnection. So uh, it's not actually about controlling the gun or not controlling the gun because even the gun that was used for this attack was purchased by his dad, not him. So, and generally the issue of gun control is highly debatable issue in America. And why more states are likely and more people are likely to favor gun control at this point in time, I, um, I doubt it even if we have over, uh, overwhelming majority uh, in the body politics in the U.S. Mm. So how would you describe the recent political landscape in president, uh, for President Biden as his sixth re-election? We understand that in his party, there have been recent calls for him to step down and for another, the party to pick another candidate. So how do you think the political climate is going to look like for him moving forward? Okay, I, I think um, since the last debate by, between Biden and uh, Donald Trump, uh, they, uh, we have seen more swing and more favorable opinion for Donald Trump uh, compared to uh, Joe Biden. Uh, many opinions, survey and poll that has been released ever since uh, the, the debate shows that uh, Biden rating uh, dropped significantly after the debate. And then since that time, concern around his age, uh, especially, and his ability to perform the presidential function for the next uh, 
a couple of years, uh, or the next time, second time is actually in question. And as a result of that, a growing call, as a, we have witnessed a growing call for, for Biden to, to, to step down. However, uh, another factor that has actually shaped this uh, election is the issue of um, the Supreme Court's judgment uh, on uh, the power of presidency and the uh, uh, on issue of uh, criminal charges against Donald Trump. Uh, this has also been in favor of Trump because it has also increased the rating and popularity of uh, Donald Trump. And again, it uh, also uh, uh, give uh, uh, many people in, un uh, unconvinced, who had earlier unconvinced, uh, the opportunity to reconsider uh, Donald Trump uh, as, as a major option. So all this have effect for Joe Biden. Although already Joe Biden has declared uh, that uh, he's uh, not considering stepping down, uh, at least for now, but we still have enough time to see what happened before uh, second debate and before the election. Mm. I have to ask now, what are the key issues driving voters in this election cycle? We've had issues like migration, we've had issues like health. So there are a couple of, so what are the key issues that would sway voter concern at the moment? Okay, uh, there are so many factors that we uh, uh, determine voting behavior in this election. Although uh, party uh, allegiance is very strong in America, uh, die hard then uh, Republican and uh, die hard then uh, uh, Democrat. And for those one, uh, little, there's little issue that can influence them to change their position. Uh, or uh, little, little uh, effort can be made to change their position. However, there are so many people that are in between those that uh, are still free, uh, that uh, free minded, that um, both Democrat and Republican can actually struggle for or tussle for their compete for their attention to to win their hearts. Um, issues that are common in time of uh, public uh, concern recently is the issue of abortion. Uh, abortion right or ban uh, is a major issue in, in this election. Again, the issue of deep states, uh, whether the state should be enlarged or should be minimized, uh, the roles that the state should perform. Uh, we have seen in many of the uh, Donald Trump uh, campaign uh, uh, statements uh, declaring war against an, an, uh, deep states or his displeasure for deep states. Why Democrats, by their tradition, have always uh, considered how states can do more for the people, uh, especially in time of um, health care, uh, education, and so on. Uh, we have seen cases whereby Donald Trump... Uh, uh, the clear intention to scrap some um, department uh, as well as to defund uh, or uh, reduce state spending on certain areas, uh, especially on the issue of education, issue concern around health care, uh, FBI, and so on. So issue of deep states is also going to influence the decision of many voters in this uh, upcoming election. Uh, another issue is the issue of immigration. Uh, policy of uh, mass deportation uh, that uh, is proposed by Donald Trump and some of his followers is a major subject of concern for many voters. Many voters that have um, uh, that are former, I mean, that are immigrant now citizen that have uh, 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 that can now vote may also decide their voting decision based on an uh, immigration policy of Joe Biden or Democrat and the Republican. Issue of gun control uh, uh, is another issue, and again, the foreign policy of the two. Uh, candidate or the two party is also a subject of concern. Uh, their disposition towards Israel and the um, Palestinian crisis, as well as um, their disposition towards the um, Russia Ukraine war, uh, towards NATO and then um, towards China. These are issues that will determine uh, voters' um, uh, uh, perception. Again, because in America we have African American, we have Chinese American, we have Russian American, all these people will vote. And their foreign policy of the United States towards their home country may also shape their uh, 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 decision voting behavior. So these are some of the issues that will shape uh, uh, the upcoming election. Mm.
so when you were speaking it's earlier, Dr. Ewole, you did a bit, a little bit of, you know, difference between the Republican Party and the other party. Now, what kind of hold? You now, the Republican Party now almost looks like a Donald Trump kind of party. Now, could you explain the kind of hold Donald Trump has on his supporters? We've seen a couple of them where they grant interviews to the media and they're like diehard fans. What kind of hold does he have over voters and his supporters? Well, many people have described this uh, the development as the age of popularism or populism, whereby uh, a particular leader have a very strong hold, mobilization capacity to uh, to sway the public in his support or to mobilize the uh, uh, the electorate or party members to his support. So Donald Trump enjoy what is um, commonly referred to as uh, populism in his party and beyond his party. And then now speaking against Donald Trump for any politician in his party is like uh, digging their own grave. So that's uh, uh, the, 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 the way and manner that uh, his populism uh, has been developed to that stage, whereby many politicians in his party, uh, even when they disagree or have contrary opinion, they have to be very careful not to say something that will affect their political base or popul uh, electoral base in their constituency. Mm. So uh, populism is working for Donald Trump, uh, to, to put it simply. Okay. Now, I would have to ask you, in line with these uh, latest developments and, of course, everything that is happening, how would this affect the U.S.'s position on the global stage? We're seeing that U.S. is lending its efforts to the war between Israel and Hamas. We also see the same thing happening with the war in Ukraine uh, between Russia and Ukraine. And, of course, a couple of other issues around the world. If Donald Trump becomes president of the United States, obviously he has you know, different policies he would want to enact. If President Biden continues to be president, of course, we will also see a progression. So how, you know, will these changes define the United States, you know, moving forward on the global scene? Okay, uh, depending on whoever emerges as the winner, if uh, Donald Trump emerges as uh, the winner, we are likely going to see a different foreign policy position towards the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict. But then um, uh, there is this likelihood that there will be uh, he will be very careful in dealing with Israel. Uh, either Democrat or Republican, dealing with Israel requires certain, is a delicate balance in the U.S. Uh, most, uh, it is rare to see a U.S. president trying to do anything that will uh, undermine the national security interest of Israel. So why they try as much as possible to uh, persuade or to find common ground between uh, uh, Israel and Palestine. So, uh, 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 however, Donald Trump is more likely to take more radical position, uh, especially against uh, 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 Iran, which is the major uh, uh, supporter or backer of uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthis, and other uh, uh, group that are uh, 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 of major concern in that region. And in time of uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict. Donald Trump have already declared his intention to end the war even before he swearing if he emerged as the winner of that election. So, uh, in contrast to what we are seeing with um, uh, Joe Biden in time of trying to support uh, Ukraine capacity to resist Russia uh, aggression, there's high likelihood for 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 Donald Trump to intervene in time of a diplomatic effort to bring the two together, possibly or to do one thing or the other to convince Putin to withdraw uh, its force. So, but we are yet to see uh, what will happen. Although the kind of relationship enjoyed between the uh, uh, relationship between Putin and then Donald Trump is that uh, quite close. And that relationship, that individual uh, and level of relationship can be leveraged for, for negotiation and uh, diplomatic uh, 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 solution to Russia. But at the current stage, even uh, do not even uh, Joe Biden return back, there's likelihood of continuous support for Ukraine in time of its resistance uh, uh, against uh, Russia aggression. Mm. Well, I have to ask Can you. I, okay, please go ahead. Okay, 
other area of foreign policy, like uh, in time of China, we are more likely to see continuous uh, 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 pressure on China. And either Donald Trump or Joe Biden will continue to see more aggressive foreign policy towards China uh, because U.S. consider China as a competitor uh, in many spheres of, uh, 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 of international politics. If uh, Donald Trump emerges as the president, we are more likely to see significant change in its relation towards Africa, uh, towards the U.S. relation towards Africa, as well as uh, developing countries generally. Uh, currently, the immigration policy is quite liberal uh, for many African uh, migrants, as well as uh, those in the Caribbean and Latin America. So, but then uh, with Donald Trump, more stringent immigration policy uh, will be put in place, which may affect re current relationship with uh, uh, many African countries. And uh, given his uh, uh, antecedents in the last uh, uh, administration, uh, there's a likelihood of uh, not too cordial, uh, because the last relationship, some of the attrition of uh, Donald Trump actually undermine uh, US-African uh, cooperation or relation. However, that does not actually mean that uh, the economic security and other area of cooperation uh, will be totally dismissed by the new president. Definitely, we build on some of those areas as well. Mm. Well, there is a currently national convention in Wisconsin where the Republican nominee, Donald Trump, is expected to be named officially now the, uh, the Republican nominee. And of course, we're seeing that security is being beefed up across that area. Are we also expecting to see security being beefed up around President Biden and contenders in this election? Uh, definitely. Uh, this um, particular incident, the attempted uh, uh, assassination of uh, uh, pre uh, former President Donald Trump, has actually raised alarm. And because of that, the Secret Service, the FBI, and the local police are more likely to re-strategize, beef up security. Because uh, uh, one of the issues that has been raised by the security agencies was that uh, uh, the the, 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 but, uh, the the suspected, I mean, the accident or the perpetrator, that's uh, Thomas Matthew uh, Cruz, who was involved in the attempted assassination, uh, was uh, lo uh, located at... Uh, uh, fix his position around somewhere that is considered outside the perimeter of the campaign. So, but with this particular incident now, we are more likely to see expansive or expansion in conception of perimeter, in protection of uh, uh, a politician, presidential candidate, and the campaign venue or rallies and, as well as uh, political activities around during uh, and before, before and during this election. So, the, the security agency, the secret service, the FBI, and the local police are more likely to strategize and expand their, uh, uh, their capacity and conception of uh, security in this time in the U.S. Mm. Well, these are very definitely very interesting developments taking place on the U.S. election scene. Dr. Yeole, thank you so much for joining us and giving us those developments. We really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. We've been speaking with Dr. Samuel Yewole. He, uh, he is a lecturer at the Department of Political Science from the Federal University of Oyekiti, Nigeria. He's also a research fellow at the African Center for the Study of the United States in the University of Petora, South Africa.